I'm Lucy Shaw and this is The Sewing Room, which is the headquarters of the Guild of St Clair, which I set up about 10 years ago with my local friends to support priests celebrating the traditional mass by mending and making their vestments. Right, now here I'm going to show you how to stitch loose braid back down onto a chasuble. ball. This is a very common problem. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why not just machine stitch it down? It's so quick and convenient. This is the reason why we're not going to do that. Not so neat on the back. We're aiming to emulate the medieval craftsmen who built those beautiful cathedrals with hidden gargoyles, not like the builders that threw up Ronan Point. So the first skill you'll need to master is threading your needle and tying a knot at the end of it and casting on ready to start sewing. There's no um, hard and fast rule about what needle to use when. In general I always just say use whatever's comfortable for you but embroidery needles are quite delicate and will struggle with metallic braids and, um, and heavy damasks that vestments tend to be made of. This is a, a between needle from Merchant and Mills which I really like, they're very strong, very small. So, great though the temptation may be, do not lick the end of the thread. <laughs> Trim the end off with a sharp pair of scissors so that it's still tightly wound and crisp. And position the thread so that it's only barely poking out from the end of your fingers. And then push the needle onto the thread, rather than trying to poke a long length of thread through the hole. Perfect threaded needle every time. To tie a knot, take the end of the thread wrap it two or three times round the needle, hold the wraps in place in your left hand, gently but firmly, and then pull the needle through, still holding the wraps, and hey presto, a nice neat knot at the end. When you've threaded your needle, you're ready to cast on. I've laid my vestment out flat so that it's easier to see what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to take your thread with a knot in it and cast on. Near where you're going to start, but in a place where it will later be invisible, thread in your needle and make a couple of tiny stitches, perhaps just a millimetre or a couple of millimetres. And then cut off the knot. Having cut the knot off, simply bring the needle up in the place where you're going to start. I'm going to bring it up onto the surface of the braid. I'm going to make really tiny stitches to hold this braid down. So perhaps one millimetre or two millimetres at the absolute most. And I'm going to poke the needle down and I'm rubbing with my other fingers on the other side to make sure that the needle isn't going through the lining. So it's only going through the, the braid and the damask. Most of the thread is going to be underneath the braid. The stitches on top are perhaps a centimetre apart, maybe a little bit less, really tiny. So this is like a kind of miniature back stitch with most of the stitch underneath the main fabric. But the back stitches aren't visible on the other side. One of the advantages of using um, braids like this is that your stitches disappear completely. So they don't need to be perfectly neat or perfectly aligned they'll just sink into all the metal and decorative couching and you won't see a thing. But they are quite stiff. It's not cheating to turn over and check that you haven't gone through. And when you're first starting, you may find you have to check every single stitch to make sure that it hasn't gone through the lining. I've got about an inch left now. So when you get to the end of where your, your braid needs stitching, overshoot a little bit so there's an overlap between the new stitching and the old, just to strengthen the existing stitching. And then do two or three holding stitches as you did at the beginning, very close to each other. Um, with a braid like this, this can be done on top of the braid because they won't be visible, but 
if uh, the stitches are visible, you'll need to tuck them underneath the border of the braid and then bring the needle up at some distance away so that there'll be a tail end inside. So just cut the thread off so there's no loose end visible on the top of the braid and no stitches except for these ugly sewing machine ones on the wrong side. Thank you.